Hey guys, I'm Riley. And I'm Chris. With Active Galactic Videos. We're hanging out in the common room of the MMT Observatory during our tour of the facilities. There's a lot of really great science that happens here. One of the things that makes the MMT special is that it has many secondary mirrors and instruments, many of which are capable of multifaceted observations. The scientists using the telescope tonight, part of the MMT Exoplanet Atmosphere Survey, using the ARIES instrument to study hot Jupiter exoplanets. I'm Josh Lothringer. I'm a third year grad student at the Lunar and Planetary Laboratory at the University of Arizona working with Travis Barman studying exoplanet atmospheres. All right, I'm here at the MMT using the 6.5 meter telescope uh, to look at hot Jupiter exoplanets. So exoplanets that are hot and bright and they're so close to their host star um, that we can actually detect them pretty easily. So we're trying to detect molecules like uh, carbon monoxide or water in the atmosphere to try and understand um, what these atmospheres actually look like because they're so different from what the uh, Earth is like. All right, so we're using ARIES because it's an extremely high resolution instrument that we can look in the uh, near infrared to resolve these really tiny lines. And because the hot Jupiter is traveling so fast, um, the spectral line is actually shifting in wavelength. So um, when the planet is going away from us in its orbit, uh, the spectral line is actually shifting red, so the planet looks a little bit redder than it normally would. While the planet's coming towards us, it shifts a little bit blue. And we're tracking that shift to try and identify molecules in the atmosphere and, and which spectral lines we can actually find. So by detecting these molecules in these, uh, the atmosphere of these hot Jupiters, we can actually begin to understand things like how the planet formed or how hot the planet is right now. Um, and things like what the atmosphere is actually made of, because a lot of that is actually unknown right now. Um, so with this, we can get a clue to some of those ideas. The ARIES instrument is also used by a couple of other groups studying exoplanets. One really cool example is a group that was studying the atmosphere of super-Earths, rocky terrestrial planets that are just a couple of times larger than the Earth. ARIES isn't the only instrument on the MMT capable of taking more than one type of data. While ARIES can take spectroscopy and photometry, the SPOL instrument is capable of taking another type of data, polarimetry, and also spectroscopy. Spectroscopy is a way of measuring the strength of light per wavelength of the light, and polarimetry measures polarization. Normal light vibrates in all kinds of directions, but polarized light vibrates in one direction more than the others as it travels. Both of these individually are common tools used by astronomers all over the world, but doing both of them at the same time is very rare. SPOL is an instrument capable of doing both polarimetry and spectroscopy simultaneously, and there's only about a dozen instruments in the entire world capable of doing so. SPOL is carried to and from three different telescopes in southern Arizona, so it's made to travel. At the smaller telescopes, SPOL is used for brighter objects, but it reaches its best at the MMT, because the larger telescope allows us to view dimmer objects. One of the coolest things SPOL can be used to study are supernovae, the violent explosions of dying stars. Typically, you can only get a one-dimensional picture of the explosion, but with spectropolarimetry, you can get a full three-dimensional idea of what's happening near the explosion site. My name is Grant Williams, I'm the director of the MMT Observatory, and like many directors, I have an opportunity to do my own independent research. Oftentimes, the demands of the job make it such that it's difficult to get a lot of research done, but I do get some done, and the research that I do is studying supernovae, and at the MMT, we've used the S-Pole instrument to study about 25 different supernovae. For supernovae, if the explosion is spherical, the light that comes to us is unpolarized. But if the explosion's non-spherical, then the light that comes to us is polarized. So far, for most of the supernova we've studied, there is a net polarization measured, which means they're non-spherical explosions.
As telescopes and instruments become bigger and more powerful, the capability of ground-based astronomy will continue to expand, allowing astronomers to learn more about our universe and make new discoveries. The possibilities for multiple observation instruments don't end with exoplanets and supernovae. In fact, they can be used to study things in this solar system all the way out to the farthest known galaxies. In many cases, multiple instruments on several different telescopes can be used to study an object using more than one method. If you haven't already, be sure to check out our MMT and LBT tour videos. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Is there a telescope in Arizona that you'd like us to tour? Be sure to let us know in the comments below.